so we're gonna make black bean brownies. I'm gonna kneel down every once in a while because uh, I am technically challenged today. So uh, we're gonna try to do this and then <clears throat> I'll show you how to do the fried rice. I'll give you secrets to making perfect fried rice. But for the black bean brownies, I have one can of black beans. So all I'm doing is I'm putting them in the food processor. And then, ooh, before I do that, I need to do something to show you guys. I already forgot. This recipe calls for oat flour. And I use a lot of oat flour in a lot of my cooking now. And all that oat flour is, is you take regular oats and just chuck it in the food processor and let it spin. So you can use any kind of oats you have lying around. You can use quick cooking, um, old fashioned, really anything you have. So I'm just gonna let that go. And then you want it to be pretty fine. So right now it's still kind of, there are big chunks in there. I wanna get it as fine as possible. So I'm gonna let it go a little bit more. And you can use this as a substitute in a lot of your baking. So if you've got a recipe that calls for a certain amount of flour, you can take about a quarter cup of it out and substitute with oat flour. So it's not super fine, but it's fine enough for this recipe. And then we're gonna add everything else. So what goes in here are uh, black beans, a can of black beans, or I soaked mine, cooked mine, and did everything good. <clears throat> and then I have coconut oil. So if you don't have coconut oil, you can use regular vegetable oil and you're gonna add that in and you want it melted. And then I've also got cocoa powder and a little bit of vanilla if you have it lying around or almond extract works too. Baking powder and honey, agave, or maple syrup. So this is your sweetener. And you do need to add, it, it seems like a lot, it's about half a cup. Um, if you don't add it, it will kind of taste funky. So add what you need to add for this recipe. It's healthy with the black beans anyway. And then chocolate chips. So what I do is I'll save some of these chocolate chips to put on top too. So I'm not gonna add them all in, I'm just gonna add a little bit. And you want your oven at about uh, 350 for this. So I'm just gonna let this go. And there you go. So you've got this kind of like oat mixture with chocolates in it. When it bakes, it actually smooths it out a little bit. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use to bake it. And it only takes about 15 minutes. And it, depending on what size you want. So I'm gonna make them in kind of like mini loaf pans, but you can use whatever you have on hand. Um, no, understanding that if you are using something smaller, it'll just bake faster. The other thing about this recipe is there's nothing in there in this that can't be eaten raw anyway. And so you don't have to worry about it baking through, cooking through, or anything like that. The great thing about this recipe is that the black beans keep it really moist. So you've got that kind of brownie feel to all of it, and you get that craving, you satisfy that craving with something healthy that has a whole bunch of fiber in it because you've got oats and um, black beans in there. And then if you wanted, you could use uh, cacao. But what they realized is that when you use cacao powder instead of uh, regular cocoa powder, when, you, when it touches heat, there's really not much of a difference. You lose those good nutrients in the raw cacao. So you can do whichever one you want. All right, so then I've got three little guys right here that I've kind of portioned out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a couple extra that have kind of melted on me. 
little chocolate chips right on top. And then that goes in the oven, 350 again. Um, if you have it on convection, you might wanna drop it down in the other 25 degrees. And that just goes in for about 15 minutes. Now, the main thing I need you to remember is if you're using canned beans that have a lot of salt in them, or there are beans that just have salt in them, make sure you rinse them really, really, really well. Um, you can get most of it out. If you think about it, most recipes that are baked with this much sugar and this much um, chocolate in it usually ask for a pinch of salt anyways. And so just try to rinse them the best that you can. Um, the other thing you can do is also soak them overnight. So if you've got black beans that you know are really, really salty, just let them soak overnight and then you're ready to go. So you've got three little loaves going in. So I'm gonna put them in and they should be done when we are done with the class. I forgot to add these, sorry. So if you want, you can add a little bit of uh, nuts inside, um, just anything else that you like normally in your brownies. So that's it for that. Yeah. I felt like I needed to show something that you guys would probably have lying around. Um, and one thing that I constantly make is fried rice. So I'm gonna show you a couple tricks with fried rice just because it can be made healthy. It's not unhealthy to eat fried rice. It's how you actually make the fried rice. So the main thing you need is a nonstick pan, unfortunately. Um, if you don't have a nonstick pan, what I can say is use a very, very well seasoned a cast iron pan, it'll work. The other thing is that if you are using your cast iron pan, cook your eggs separately. If you cook your eggs in your cast iron pan with everything the way that I'm gonna try to show you today, what ends up happening is it'll just stick to the bottom of your pan. Um, and then the other thing about fried rice is you need day old rice. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't know if I want fried rice that day and so on, so what do I do? What you can do is you can make your rice ahead of time, put it on a sheet pan, so grab a sheet pan, and then stick it in your freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. It'll cool it all down for you. And what you're looking for when you get fried rice is rice that is um, cold to the touch, and you should be able to separate all the, I'm making half a portion today, sorry. So what you should be able to do is go in and break it up with your fingers. You can use long grain rice, short grain rice, really any kind of rice you have lying around. So I'm just gonna break it up with my fingers. Now, if you like eggy, eggy fried rice, one of the other things you can do is you can crack an egg in this and mix the egg with the rice and then saute it. Each little kernel will then be covered with a little bit of egg so you've got almost like a yellow egg, uh, a yellow fried rice, and you can use just egg yolks too at that point. So one of the first things you wanna do when you get this though, is you wanna just coat it with a little bit of oil. So I'm just squirting a couple drops of oil on there, and then I'm gonna mix that up. That'll also help it, help prevent it from sticking around, sticking onto the pan as much too. So I'm just gonna mix that around and I'm gonna set that aside. So I wanna get, make sure I get all those big chunks broken up and that's it. So I'm gonna set that aside and then I've got my egg that I'm gonna crack, but I wanted, a lot of people are saving their eggs, they're limited on eggs. And so how do you tell if an egg is good? So I'm gonna put it into a glass of water and it should sink. If it sinks, it's a good egg. If it floats, that's when you need to throw it out. So start ignoring the best buy dates and things like that. Just soak it in water. If it goes to the bottom, then it's good to go. If it floats, you gotta get rid of it. So I'm gonna take this egg out. And I'm only using one egg today. And so when you crack an egg, you wanna you you don't, <laughs> sorry, you don't wanna use the side of the bowl. Because if you use the side of the bowl, what ends up happening is the eggshell will go straight in there. You want to use a hard surface. So if you've got like a cutting board or a, a baking sheet, I'm going to give it one good crack 
and then let it come out just like that. So that's the one egg that we're going to be adding. And then you've got a whole bunch of other stuff. I gave you a shopping list based on what I made last time, but I already ran out of bell peppers. So I didn't have bell peppers. What I have today is I have baby bok choy. I have um, a carrot and then I have some broccoli too. The carrot is going to be the substitute for the um, bell pepper that I said. So what's going to happen is I'm going to first dice up an onion too, or a little bit. I'm only doing half this recipe, so a quarter of it. So again, this is where the root comes up. So you want this frilly hair part to stay together. I'm going to trim off one end, and then I'm going to cut through. If you try from doing this, just stick your, start storing your um, onions in the refrigerator. And if you stick it in the refrigerator, it'll prevent those gases from coming up. So I'm using a quarter of it. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna cut it all the way through, but I'm just gonna reserve part of it. And then I'm gonna go through one more time. And then I'm gonna dice. I'm only gonna dice half of that since I only need a quarter. And then push that aside. And then I've got garlic. So we've got garlic cloves. Again, we're going to use the back of our hand, push down, and peel it apart. I'm going to just use one. And the easiest way to do this is when you have such a little amount of garlic, make little slices first, and then go back around with a cloth and dice away. And if you want, you can rock back and forth with the top of your hand if you're scared to get too close to it to get that good mince going. And then I've got my carrot that I'm going to chop. And again, I'm scraping with the back of my knife, not the front of it. Organic carrots. Um, they're pretty decently priced. If they're organic, don't peel it. Keep the peel on because most of the nutrients are going to be over there anyway. So I'm just going to trim off the ends. And then I'm going to actually make it a little bit smaller to cut. So I'm going to cut it in half and then I'm going to quarter it just like that. I'm going to stack them up real close. I don't like carrots, but I know they're healthy for me. So the smaller I cut them up, the more I can't taste them. So just use what you have. And if you've got organic stuff lying around, the better. All right, so I'm just going to use that. And then I've got broccoli. And I'm gonna just use a little bit, not all of it. I'm gonna take one or two florets. The main thing to remember when making fried rice is you don't wanna overcrowd the pan. If you overcrowd the pan, you'll lose that kind of sear that you're looking for and everything's just gonna get gummy. Because rice has so much starch in it that it ends up kind of gluing itself together if you're not making it correctly. So the other thing you can try to do is you can use brown rice. Long grain brown rice probably has the least amount of starch. And so if you use that, you'll get a lot further. And then I got baby bok choy. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually trying to grow bok choy at home. So what you can do is you can take this, I'm gonna take off this top leafy part and this little part that's got still the stem attached to it, if you soak it in water, it'll grow back and you've got more bok choy ready to go. So I'm gonna use a couple baby bok choys. Um, you can do that with almost any leafy green that still has a stem. So uh, may, like romaine lettuce, you can even do it with celery. So I'm just gonna chop that up. All right, so I've got onion, garlic, carrots, broccoli, and a little bit of bok choy. If you look at all of this, what you will realize is that these two things are probably gonna take longer to cook than this guy. Last thing is the bok choy. <clears throat> so look at what you have and cook based on that. I have a piece of chicken here too. I actually like using cooked meat already. So what I would do is cook this chicken on the side, make sure it's cooked through and then chop it up. But if you don't and you want to do it, what I'm going to show you today, this is what, how I'm going to do it. I'm going to actually chop up the chicken ahead of time 
cook the chicken and push it aside. So, you're gonna take your chicken. Um, if you find it hard to cook, uh, cut chicken, you can stick it in your freezer. Stick it in your freezer for a little bit and then chop it up, you'll get a better dice out of it. So I'm not gonna use all of it, I'm just gonna use some. And push forward. Trim it if you need, if it's got a lot of fat on it, go ahead and trim it. Um, really use what it is that you want. So that's all about all I need. I'm making about two to four portions. So it's really up to you how much you want to add. All right, so I got my pan here. I'm gonna spread it over just a little bit. There we go. And I'm gonna use. I am using a very, very large flame. So this goes real quick. If you're doing this at home, and I do this at home all the time, just realize your flame isn't as hot and that it's gonna take a little bit of time. So be patient. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, put in my oil, and then I'm going to wait until the oil gets hot. So what you're going to do is, it looks like if you were driving behind a car on a hot day. It should have that kind of shimmery look to it. Then I'm going to add my onions and garlic, and my carrots. <clears throat> All right. If you want, you can start practicing how to flip food. What it is, is it's a push and a pull. So push and pull, push and pull. And that's it. I don't want my onions to brown. If my onions brown, it'll start to burn before everything else finishes. All I'm looking for is the onion to turn kind of translucent. So what you want is a little bit of translucent onions going on, and then you can start adding the rest of your ingredients. Because I have raw chicken, I'm gonna push this all aside to where the flame really isn't hanging out. The flame will be in the middle, and I'm gonna cook my chicken too. And I'm not gonna to touch it. That's the number one problem people have when they're cooking. They wanna to start touching things and moving things around. There's no need to do that. When the food is ready to release itself, it will release itself. If you keep scraping at it, you're actually creating more areas for things to stick. And so try not to move it around. My flame is really high, so that's why I'm moving and I'm cooking such a small amount. But now I'm just gonna flip it and I'm gonna mix it all up. Because as you remember, I still have a few things to add inside. So again, move to the side. Now I'm gonna add my broccoli. You could add your broccoli a little earlier too if you want. Really up to you how you like your veggies. And then the fun part, the egg. So before I add my egg in, I'm gonna add a little bit more oil. I'm gonna give that a good mix and I'm gonna put it right in the middle, just like that. Some people will add their rice in first. I choose not to. I usually just do it this way because it's a little bit easier. And I'm gonna give it a good mix. This is an older pan as you can tell, but it's not the kind that has the Teflon in it. It's a copper, the one that they sell in the infomercials. So, just give it a good chop up, just like that. Right as you see the egg whites kind of set. So once the egg whites are set, you're good to go. I'm gonna give that a good scrape, push it to the side too. Now, the last thing we're gonna add is our rice and our seasoning. So I've got my rice that I mixed with a little bit of oil. I'm gonna put that right in the middle and then give it a good mix. And now you can add seasoning. So what kind of seasoning can you add? Um, I like soy sauce. Some people will just do 
uh, salt and pepper, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just as good that way, too. So I've got that going. I'm gonna add my soy sauce in now, though. So again, letting it sit for a little bit. Don't touch it. Let it heat through, because that rice is cold. And I'm gonna add a little bit of soy sauce or liquid aminos. If you've got uh, coconut liquid aminos, you can add that too. That's all the seasoning. If you wanted to add salt and pepper, you can. But again, I'm not touching it until it really heats through. If you have a lid, you can put a lid on too, and it'll help make everything go faster. Because everything now in here is ready to eat. We're just heating it through. And again, use what you have lying around. I did this the other night with um, lemongrass pork. And I had greens of some sort lying around and added that in. So before we finish off, though, we've got one last thing to add. Our baby bok choy. Because this is like, it's kind of like baby spinach. All it needs is to be reheated through, um, or to be wilted, excuse me. So there's residual heat from the rice going on right now. There's a little bit of heat lying on the bottom of the pan still. So all of that will help it finish off and you're ready to go. If you are scared of the bok choy, like the stems not cooking through, what you can do is cook the baby of the stems of the bok choy with something else first. So you can do it with the broccoli or the uh, carrots. And that's it. Now the main thing about making this taste good at the end is good old sesame oil. So sesame oil is not something that you should really be cooking with. There's a couple of things that you might be able to add um, to cook it with. I'll give you guys recipes. But the main thing is that sesame oil kind of turns rancid when it hits too much heat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the heat and then drizzle it in. And a little goes a long way. So I'm just adding a little bit of sesame oil right in there and then some scallions. I got some chats going on, hold on. Yeah, spam is definitely the way to go too. So I've been making a lot of spam masubi at home too. And what happens with the Spam is the next morning we make breakfast out of the Spam too. So we do a Spam and egg sandwich for breakfast usually, if we have Spam masubi the day before. And that's it. So you've got fried rice ready to go. And I'm just going to bowl it up. And... You can add more seasoning to it, taste as you choose, uh, but you can really empty out your refrigerator with this. So you can add all kinds of veggies inside, just remembering that you add the veggies based on how firm they are and how well they cook. So if you have something that's super crunchy, super hard, you wanna cook it early on, and then do the, I like doing the egg first and then adding the, um, and then adding the rice, but it's really up to you. And if you want something less starchy, use brown rice and you're ready to go. So that's it. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Jess. Yeah. Jess, my skirt. What's the uh, uh, portion for the brownies? Um, it's on the website and we will send it to you. I will send, I'll put it in this chat in a sec. Actually, hold on, I can do it right now. Just give me one second. I have it right in front of me, that's why. I can give it to everybody then. Realizing I did mess up and I didn't add the, uh, the walnuts in. All right, everybody, I am putting it all up here so that you can see. There you go. It's in the chat. If you can reach the chat, it's right there. And let me just check on them. And I would cut through them right now, but there they are. So that's what they look like. Um, they look great. Um, and I'm not going to cut through them because they are still warm. And so that extra chocolate that's in there 
is what's going to keep it together. There's a lot of variations of these um, that you can make, one of them being made with flaxseed egg. So if you're interested, what you can do is you can add even more nutrients in there by doing the version with flaxseed egg. It makes it a little bit um, more wet of a product though. So this one's a little bit more dry, um, but it tastes like the brownie, like the brownie edges idea, I guess. Um, so you're just waiting for it to crack on top, realizing again, everything in there is cooked and you can eat it all anyways. You could eat this batter raw if you wanted to. But it's easy. It's usually with stuff people have lying around. And so easy peasy dessert that's healthy and will keep you nice and big. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you. Any uh, suggestions for next week? Please let us know. I don't know. Um, I don't know what people have been cooking at home, but I cook every night again. Um, I'm trying to keep our website updated with new recipes. Um, I have a whole bunch. My husband has been making his friends jealous. He's been Instagramming every dinner recently. So I've got a week worth of random, random, random recipes. Um, for the rice, somebody was asking, can it be any type? Yes. So it can be brown rice, uh, long grain rice. The easiest to use is definitely long grain rice, though. So if you've got long grain, because it has less starch on it, um, it won't stick to things as much. So basmati, if you have basmati lying around, that's probably the easiest one to use. Uh, pasta or baking bread tips? Okay. You guys want to do the bread baking. I will show the bread baking then. That'll be fun. Um, I've, yeah, I've been doing it. If you can find yeast, though, I found flour and yeast recently at Aldi. So if you can't uh, find it, those two places, uh, Aldi seems to have both those items in stock right now. And pasta ideas. There's a lot of pasta ideas. That's nice and easy, but I will definitely keep those two ideas in mind next week. Maybe I'll do a pasta and a bread dish of some sort. Pasta and bread. Um, yes, and I definitely have French onion soup recipes. So that's nice and, and that's also one of those things that's easy to make, especially if you have an instant pot. Do most of you have instant pots by any chance? If you do, that's what I've been cooking out of. Okay, so and a lot of people have been intimidated by it. This is the time to pop that guy out and start using it. So. I'll give you guys some recipes that will also use the Instant Pot. So if you've never used it before, it can make everything. I make yogurt in it. Um, I make stews in it. I've made cheesecake in it. I've proofed bread in it. There's actually quite a lot you can do with your Instant Pot. So I'll keep those in mind and I will see you guys all next week. Have a happy day. See you guys later. Bye. Yes.